and we are live hello good evening and welcome to Wednesday no hello good evening and welcome to Monday night it's Monday the 8th of July in the week that the Envy committee will be voting on the product tobacco product directive and as you can probably hear I'm all a little bit tongue-tied tonight we're going to run through here on VT talk on a Monday instead of Wednesday what's going to be happening in Brussels we've got uh, a little bit of um, controversy to cover information to give you um, and it's going to be a good night uh, as you can see I'm joined in the big window tonight by Lorian C of ECA the uh, Electronic Cigarette Consumer Association good evening to you Lorian how are you I'm fine thank you yeah good 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 now I should point out any noticeable lag between Lorian's audio and her video is down to Skype it never used to happen it does these days but in the doghouse as ever was we have the effervescent loveliness the bountiful beautylicious babe that is the one and only Sav how are you doing Sav? I'm absolutely fine Dave how's yourself? Well um, I think the, the, the safest phrase is I'm walking about and breathing my brain is somewhat fried um, but I'm all fired up I'm excited for Wednesday are you excited for Wednesday Lorian? Uh, I am <clears throat> even more so now yeah yes it's all good and we're going to talk about that further into the show and this show is called VT Talk And here we are in the studio live as live can be and on Wednesday it will all kick off. Um, we're off to Brussels and we are going there as consumers. We are indeed all consumers. We're ASIC users. That's what we are. Um, we've got a little bit of something to cover in the middle of the show because apparently there are people who think we're not consumers. Ha! <laughs> They're wrong we are and we'll put that right in the middle of the show but before then i need to tell everybody exactly what is going to be going on and here's how it's going to work sav and myself will be there at st pancras station at the um, group travel check-in desk now the people at st pancras the eurostar people tell me it's the most recognizable place for groups to meet up together which is probably what you would expect apparently it's the first turn on the left when you get in. in in other words it's more or less right beside the door you should be able to recognize either Sav or myself but if you can't recognize either of us we will have Marco van Basten there as well now Marco is six foot 19 in his stock and feet um, <coughs> he's a very very tall lad big beard it's difficult to miss if you're not sure what he looks like check out his show tomorrow night and it'll give you some idea and trust me when I tell you this the camera is about 80 feet away from him when he's doing that show the man is huge he's head and shoulders above me and I'm six foot two he's six foot 19 he's huge you'll not miss him so we'll be there from are you ready for this one Sav we'll be there from half past seven <laughs> <laughs> you weren't expecting that were you I've got to be there for bedtime. We've got to be there for bedtime, yes. Oh. We'll be there from half past seven. And all we need you to do is come up and say hello and you will be given your <coughs> ticket there and your ticket back. Are you listening, Lorian? Because this applies to you too. I am listening. I has all the tickets here. We'll give you your ticket there and your ticket back. Um, and as we all check in, we're all on, I think it's carriage number five going and carriage number 16 coming back says non-smoking it doesn't say non-vaping uh, so we'll be all right there uh, we've already checked and it's fine that's okay that's all good um, so carriage five uh, we'll be there from 7 30 please be as early before 8 30 as you can although when I phoned Eurostar today just to check everything was going to be as it should be they said 8 30 that's that's fine we'll get in not an issue so that's all good so people that are coming down from the northeast on the uh, what is it the 10 to 5 uh, that lands at, at, at King's Cross at quarter past 8 it'll take you about 7 minutes to walk from King's Cross up to St Pancras 
and we'll see you there at the group travel check-in desk. You'll not be able to miss us, there'll be a cloud of fog everywhere. Might even smell a custard if Sav's there, yes? <laughs> yes, we might smell a custard. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody there. Now, what then will happen is we will get on the train and we will go to Brussels. And then when we get to Brussels, well, I'm going to let Marco take over. This is what will happen. This is where we are going to be, that little green area. That's uh, Place de Luxembourg. So if you're going to fly your helicopter in, that's where you need to be. And the, uh, the building with the little circular bit, that is the European Parliament. Now, we arrive at uh, Gar Midi, the station there. Uh, and if you take Route 2, which is the orange one, for about five stops, you come to Troon. From Troon, you can have a leisure little stroll down Place de Luxembourg. And that takes you to there. Hey, we'll update it again. There you go. <coughs> oh, you can tell it's Monday night. I'm not practised in doing this on a Monday. I can only do it on a Wednesday and a Thursday. I'm not very well then. So, yes, we'll, we'll do exactly what Marco said. We'll take the Metro. Uh, it's three euros 70, but don't worry too much about that. Um, I shall have a pocket full of euros with me, so we'll make sure nobody gets left and stranded. And when we get off the metro at to other end, we'll have a gentle meander down. It takes about seven or eight minutes down to Place du Luxembourg. And we should be there at around about 12.30. That's what we're aiming for. That's the kind of time we're looking to be there, around about 12.30 local time. That will then give us the chance to start blowing up the black balloons, of which there are 2,000, are there not, Sav? There are, yes. There are 2,000 black balloons. And I really ought to play that black balloon song underneath while we're talking about this. <laughs> uh, if, if you're watching on video on demand, you will have missed it being played in at the beginning, but we will play this, this lovely black balloon song in, and I'm going to tweet it later. Download it. Put it on your iPad, put it on your, your MP3 player and what have you. Anyway, yes. So we get there around about 12.30 and we'll start blowing up the balloons. Now, we're going to bring some pins, but can I ask you to take a pin with you, just in case? Because I don't know what quantities pins come in. Does anybody hear you? Do you know, Lorian? Not the foggiest. Me neither. <laughs> Not the foggiest. A badge <laughs> or a pin or something like that. Just, just something that you can pop balloons with. And the idea is that we'll blow two or three up each and then just blow, pop, blow, pop, blow, pop. Now, one of the probably the most important parts of this protest that we're going to be doing is that we are consumers. We're not industry. We're not what they call AstroTurf funded by industry or any of that. We're not part of the tobacco industry lobby. We are there purely and simply as consumers. And I do know there's a lot of folks that work at various different uh, e-cig outlets, places that sell e-cigs, that are going to be joining us on the day. I would beg of you, please don't go logoed up. It's not a selling opportunity, and I'm not trying to be nasty here, but you'll see why, in the middle section of the show, why I'm saying this. We are going as purely and simply as consumers. Um, so I'll be wearing pretty much what you see me wear. You know what my shirts are like. I'll, I'll, I'll look like me. I'm not going to put a suit and tie on. I'm not going to dress up as a ego or a tornado or a anything. I'm just going to be me. Big fat lad with a big fat gob that's not afraid to use it and wants to make his voice heard in Europe. That's why we're going. And I can't wait to see the people from France, from Germany, from Belgium, from Greece, from all over the place getting together. We're going to meet fellow vapors from all over Europe and make our voices heard. So I can see your heads moving here, there and everywhere. I'm thinking <laughs> there's questions from chat, is there? There's a few questions about sort of finishing times and do we have any idea on numbers? Um, and then we're getting elaborate ideas of how to pop the balloons. Right. <laughs> well, you, I mean, you, can, you can be as ornate or not, you know, <laughs> Bank, do what you want to do. I mean, really, seriously. As long as we make the point, that's what it's all about. I had thought about trying to count a salvo in and build up in tempo and stuff like that, but it's kind of, yeah, 
I suppose if we could do it in, in multiple languages at once it would work, but the idea is basically to make the noise and, and, and make our voices heard. Time will finish. We've got to finish before three, um, and well before three, because the people that we're trying to gain the attention of are the folks that will be in the Envy Committee meeting. Um, I would envisage that everything, the formal kind of we are here and this is what we want to say thing, will be done before two o'clock because I know that the BBC particularly has scheduled interviews with actors, i.e. the likes of you and me and everybody else. Uh, so from two o'clock there'll be interviews going on and if you've got something to say to any members of the press, I think there'll be plenty there. Um, <coughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll spend a little while talking to the press, however long it takes, and then we need to be back to the railway station uh, three quarters of an hour to an hour before we've got to leave to come back and the time of the train back it says here is 18.56 so we'll need to be back at the uh, at the railway station by six o'clock local time that's five o'clock UK time so we'll be setting away again to get back at, at whatever time so we're there for six o'clock so that we can check in because it, again it's like an airport so check in at six o'clock or shortly thereafter and then we can all get on the train and uh, I suspect we'll be, I hope we'll be partying hard because by then we might know how things have gone. Now, just to bring you up to speed on that, um, as you know, all of the, uh, the various different amendments that have been tabled, there are these composite or compromise amendments and for the information of those that are tweeting hard and emailing hard the amendment that we're supporting is the compromise amendment 58 now in the envy committee meeting on wednesday that'll be the first one voted on if you like if that fails in other words if there's not enough people to vote for it then they'll move to composite amendment 57 and that's the one that makes them medicines. That's the one we don't want at all. 57, no, not good. 58, yes, very good. If both of them fail, then they go through all, how many was it, 1,300 and, well, all of them, basically. They'll vote on each little minutiae of all of the ones that were to do with e -cigs. So what we're aiming to get them to do, what we want them to do, is to support Composite Amendment 58. Um, and again, I've already tweeted about that. Those of you that are in the know, put it everywhere that you go. Put it in all of the, the, uh, the forums, Facebook, Twitter, wherever. That's where we need to go. Um, while we're talking about Twitter as well, I posted a little video up on there earlier on today. Now, we know that the Twitter account, I, I probably need to go into this nasty bit before we go much further, but let's let's take some stuff from chat. Everything's changing actually minute by minute as, as we go through things and there's emails coming in left, right and centre. I've got one here. Saf, can I throw it to you to go to chat while I just read quickly through this about Frederic Reyes? Uh, before you do, you may want to answer this because I've had a couple of people in chat saying that Chris Davis was saying that it was Amendment 49. Was he? Yes, so we may need to check up on that. Right, because the email I got through uh shortly before we went on i said 58 as i say these things are changing day by day so <coughs> if, if anybody actually if anybody's got access to twitter at the minute could you tweet chris davis and rebecca taylor and come back and let us know please what the actual number is of the amendment that we want to uh, support because as i say as of six o'clock tonight seven o'clock tonight it was 58 but God, these seriously they are changing things minute by minute as we run up to Wednesday. That's how close to the wire it is. Um, and it's got me quite confused. Um, so if somebody can do that, that'll be great. What else have we got from chat, Sav? Uh, it's mainly, again, questions. Uh, Mark Hamburg is saying, do you know if there'll be a chance for us to see the Envy vote live on a screen or anything like that? While we're there, you mean? Yeah. Um, it, it's... If you... Right... If you contact your local MEP and ask for a pass, you can go into the committee room. If you can get a pass, you can go into the committee room to count votes. 
Um, I spoke earlier on today with an MEP who shall remain nameless, who thought it might not do us any good to do that. I don't know whether it well it will be televised on um, on Europal TV, and it may well be available via Wi-Fi. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be available either on Mac or iPad or anything like that. But it would be available if you happen to have a a netbook with you. It may well be watchable. Um, we're just trying now to, to, to get this, actually I've got this email from uh, an MEP that has the information in, but it could be out of date, judging by that. Where are we? Uh, uh, well, while you're looking at that, uh, Leanna Lawless has just copied the email that Chris Davis sent out, and he is indeed saying Amendment 49. Right. What we have here, I've got this from... <coughs> uh, from Frederick Reyes um, and it says Amendment 57 presented, presented by the rapporteur and the socialist left the Greens and the Communist equates the electronic cigarette to a drug this whatever their level of nicotine Amendment 58 I wrote and the British Conservatives who co-authored saves the electronic cigarette by assimilating other tobacco products with a legislative process light this is translated from French I'm sending you text in attachments. So we've got a, we've got a difference of opinion here. Um, Frederic Arias, who is, is the one that wrote the amendment we're talking about, Amendment 58 that I've been referring to, still says in here it's Amendment 58 that she wrote in the British Conservatives. Right. Yeah? I've had a little bit more clarification from Funny Trickster who said that um, Chris Davis, I think he means, has said, I will be voting for Amendment 49, trying to make sure that while e cigs are safe, they don't have to jump through any more hoops than necessary. So it may be an additional amendment. I'm not sure. Right. Um, it, that, this, is, this is how quickly things are moving. So we've got Frederick Reyes, who is actually the uh, shadow rapporteur for Aldi, who's telling us, it's 57 and 58, and that's what we've got here. 57 we don't want, and 58 we do. The email I got through from my contacts earlier said 57, 58. Seriously, please, if, if, if anybody can get this confirmed with uh, Chris Davis and Rebecca Taylor, that would be extremely useful. Um, and this actually plays straight towards what we're going to talk about after the break. I'm sorry, Lauren, you've been sat there listening and saying not a very great deal so far. I'm uh, good as gold. So you are, so you are. Um, anything more from chat or I'll take the adverts? Um, Doodlebug, Cast Evelyn has just said, Chris Davies' one is indeed an additional one. He will not get sufficient support for it. We need to be behind Amendment 58. Right. And Gordon Beard has tweeted Chris Davies and Rebecca Taylor, so we'll, hopefully they'll get back to it. Thanks, Gordon. Um, I, I appreciate that. I, I, I actually, do you know, that this is the kind of thing that really, really gladdens my heart because here we are, a team of, of disparate people from different walks of life, all getting stuck in and helping each other out in order to do the right thing, in order to get the MEPs to do the right thing. And you know, if you take no encouragement from anything else, you've got to take encouragement from that. All agreed? Absolutely. I think so, yeah. I think that's amazing. But what we're going to do, I'll take a quick blast of adverts. Um, and have a, a further read through that little bit. And then when we come back, it's actually it could be quite serious, but it's also quite amusing at, uh, at the same time. And if that doesn't whet your appetite, I don't know what will. Be back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere.
I've ever, and I've ever Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk. iVeber and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. And we are back in the room, even though that is a picture of Sav, it's actually all of us. We're all here. Um, during, during the course of the, uh, the break, I was able to have a quick read through the rest of the email that's been sent by Ms. Rias to, uh, to Serge, um, Tasmaniac, and it's very, very positive. Very, very positive. Um, she's, she's very firm about what she says, and uh, yes, she cannot, it, it's difficult because it's translated from French into English, um, but basically she says we cannot disqualify this alternative less dangerous than tobacco. So there you go. She doesn't want it disqualified. She doesn't want it made into a medicine. It's completely wrong. And with, uh, with that kind of thing, Amendment 58 has got to go through. So have anything else quickly before we... We just had a question um, from Charlie's VBS who says, a very new question here, but who was voting on the 10th? Is it just Envy members or all MEPs or who exactly? Sorry, no idea about political process. Okay. It's the Envy committee that votes on the 10th on Wednesday. Now, the way it works out, the committee, like I suppose the same as the committees in, in the UK Parliament, they get their heads together and they come up with uh, any amendments to the, the report or the, the proposed revisions that the Commission's drafted up. The Commission is, if you like, the civil service. They're the, the mandarins of the whole thing. They draft the whole directive as they would like to see it, together with all of their reasons for doing so, and that comes in the impact assessment, which I have to say is just wrong, actually, on so many counts. And they patently... <laughs> they, never mind. The Envy Committee then examines it, goes through it with a fine tooth comb, but at the same time takes advice, takes opinions from other committees around it. So you've got the Legal Committee, Jury. You've got the Agriculture Committee, Agri. You've got the, uh, the, the, the Industry and Consumer uh, Protection, IMCO. You've got ITRE and INTA. There, there are five, four or five other committees that also have a look at it and they present their opinions to the Envy Committee. Now, some will say medicines, others have said, take it out altogether. Others, particularly jury, have said, oh, hang on a minute, it's not legal to do this. Now, it's not just the jury committee that's saying it's not legal to do this. I happen to know that a very, 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 very eminent counsel and that's the word to use, who has been very, very big in Europe, and I'm trying to be broadly hinting here, has said that the whole thing hasn't got a leg to stand on. So should there be a court case, they lose, we win, should there be a court case. However, my take on it is that that is the best backstop we could possibly have, knowing that what they're going to do is illegal. But what I would like to see happen is what Mrs. Rees has proposed in this consolidated amendment number 58 because it protects the status of e-cigs. It means that no one member state can say, actually, we don't like them, we're banning them. Or we don't like them, we're making them medicines. We don't, we, you know, no one member state can do it. It's got to be even-handed throughout every state which would mean, in return, that Denmark would have to rescind its legislation where they're already classed as medicines and therefore you can't get them. E-liquid with any nicotine in, unavailable in Denmark. They would have to rescind that if Amendment 58 goes through and is carried when it gets to plenary. And that's what I would like to see. There are other... Uh, committee opinions that have said, oh, just chuck them out. It shouldn't be covered by the TPD. And 
initially that was my take on it but the more I thought about it if if you give it a little bit of thought let's let's be a little bit selfish about it if I wanted to go on holiday to Italy for instance and Italy decides because it's not covered ECGs aren't covered by the TPD that they're going to slap tax on that makes uh, a 10 mil bottle of juice cost the equivalent of 35 quid I'm not going to be happy bunny not at all I just that wouldn't make me happy and it would put e-cigs out of the reach of an awful lot of people that should have them um, so I kind of like the idea that what Mrs Reese has come up with Rebecca Taylor the Aldi group amendment number 58 protects e-cigs and makes them available to absolutely everybody everywhere right across Europe that could not be a better situation that's exactly what we want to happen has, sorry, Sav, has, has that answered it? It has, but it's also generated another question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Lauren. <laughs> you answer this one. Well, Vaporman has said, if um, Amendment 58 gets voted for on Wednesday, is, does that mean the fight's almost over or not? Um, no, it doesn't. It means that we've, if you like, we've put the king in check, but it's not checkmate. What it means is that Envy Committee will be suggesting to the full Parliament, what's called plenary, that this is the course of action they should take. Unfortunately, there's then another vote. And unfortunately, they can pick the snots out of that as well. They can go through and go, actually, we don't like this bit, and we don't like that bit. We want this bit changed to that. We would like that blue to be red and we would like A6 to be medicines. It's possible that that could happen. So this is just a case of we've got the king in check, assuming that we get there on Wednesday, but we've finally got to get to the checkmate position. And even the plenary agreeing with Envy isn't the final move, if you like, because then the Council of Ministers, at the same time as all this is going on down this side, the Council of Ministers is coming on down this side and at the moment the Council of Ministers is looking for medicinal regulation. Now, if plenary here says, no, not meds, definitely not meds, well, we're with 58, we're with Aldi, we're with Rebecca and, and Chris and Frederica and various others, and the Council of Ministers down here going, no, nah, actually, no, we want meds. We don't, we do. We don't, we do. There's only one way to settle that. Unfortunately, it's not a fight. What then happens is it starts playing ping pong between the two, between plenary and, the, and uh, the council. And it may well go to a second reading and it could get thrown back to Envy to have another look and that gets back. And it, it could go on and on and on. It just depends. It's quite a complex procedure is this. They call it the simplified <laughs> version and it, and it isn't. It's, it's, it's the normal but complex procedure where it's all funneled down and finally they get to a point of agreement or if they don't agree, they've got to start again. At some point they go, look, we're getting nowhere, start again. Sav, you look pensive again. <laughs> well, one more question again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Charlie Vapeth has said, so what can we ask our MEPs to do if I'm writing to them again tonight? Right, okay. Here's, here's where we go with all of this. Um, Lorian, I'm going to let you tell everybody what they should be doing in terms of writing to their MPs and so on and so forth. Are you up for that? I can try, Dave. Of course I can. Go on, go for um, it. <laughs> I think it doesn't really differ entirely from what we've already been doing. Um, we've got a lot more information at our fingertips now um, and we should be passing this on to our MEPs and our MPs. And I think it's absolutely crucial that we show our MPs and our MEPs that we are real people with real stories um, and that we are genuinely and individually concerned about what's happening and that we do desperately need their support. And don't let your MP fob you off with the idea of, well, this is an EU thing and it doesn't impact here. Um, because they, they have all got the ability to help us out here, even just by um, coming on side and being another voice. Um, now, I, I don't know if, how many of you have seen it, but Anna Ecker, um, the day before yesterday, released our letter that we've written to um, McCavan and Groot. Um, and that would be coming from the UK. That's our letter to them. Obviously, the Germans have done it and the French have done it. And this is, this is our letter. 
Um, and another very handy piece of information was um, the addiction article that we had written for us um, is possibly the most perfect thing. And I'll say this, this is a personal thing from Lorien uh, without my Eka hat on. When I read the addiction article, it's the first thing that I've read in one place that perfectly explains what it is to be a smoker. And genuinely, I, I refuse to believe that anybody could read that and actually not get why NRT doesn't work and also why e-cigs aren't going to work for, many, for everybody and that would be the ideal thing to be showing your MPs and your MEPs to get them just to understand the very fundamental thing behind being addicted to the habit of smoking. Okie um, there are There are certain things as, as Lorian said that you do need to do. The first is write to them. Sorry, Sav, was that? No, no, it's all right. So I'm just, I get, I'm getting a little bit paranoid that there's going to be another question snakes up when I'm not looking no, for it. I'm good. We're good, all right, fine. Yeah. Right, write to them. But this time, this time, when you write to them, don't forget to put your full name, your address, your postcode, and your telephone number. And I'm going to show you for why. There's been a piece done today by the Corporate Europe Observatory. And as you'll be able to see from that screenshot, it's exposing the power of corporate lobbying in the UK. And here is what they've got in their first paragraph, which frankly beggars belief. But it says, with a crucial European Parliament Envy Committee vote on new tobacco legislation taking place later this week, this new report sheds some light on the extent and scope of tobacco lobbying in the Parliament. The tobacco industry has a long record of manipulation and disinformation, which has resulted in UN law intended to minimise interactions between the tobacco industry and public health policy makers, as well as to ensure their transparency. Apparently the MHRA doesn't know about that. It talks to BAT to get results of tests, but never mind. The WHO's Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, that's where it's all about. <coughs> But the lobby battle going on around the EU's new tobacco products directive shows considerable activity from traditional tobacco lobbyists and electronic cigarette firms, as well as from NGOs working on public health. Members of the European Parliament report free e-cigarettes delivered to their letterboxes, unsolicited tobacco lobbyists turning up in their offices, numerous invitations to drinks, dinners and cocktail events, Targeted social media and email campaigns coordinated by tobacco companies, indirect lobbying through small retailers, anti-counterfeiting firms and farmers groups, and allegations of industry-sourced amendments. So let's just jump to where they talk about electronic cigarettes, where it says... Um, it's already been reported in the media, in particularly a recent expose in the Wall Street Journal, that the battle around classification and restrictions on e-cigs in the Tobacco Products Directive has been intense. Well, that's true. MEPs and their assistants have told CEO, that's this publication, that they are most often contacted by the electronic cigarette lobby regarding this directive. I think that's us. Electronic cigarettes also called personal vaporizers and it goes through all that. Uh, it says e-cig companies claim they are a safe alternative to cigarettes, but the World Health Organization has warned that too little is known about the health risks of long-term use. Moreover, the WSJ documented that e-cigarette makers are emulating tactics once used by tobacco companies, such as sponsoring medical studies and testimonials from doctors, and running television spots advertising the use of e-cigarettes indoors or in the presence of children. Let me just stop there. I've watched every e-cig advert that's been produced. There is not one where anybody uses an e-cig in the presence of children. I just want that to be known. I just want that to be known. Back to it. UK electronic cigarette manufacturer SkySig have urged users and their friends and family to contact their MEPs claiming that millions of people would turn back to cigarettes effectively allowing 5 million people to die from smoking related illnesses. Right? Paul Murphy MEP explained that in the Parliament MEPs are subjected to a lot of astroturf campaigning in the sense that it is manufactured. We get emails from so-called ordinary constituents about electronic cigarettes but they are really detailed about the directive. And Laurie, I know you've got something to say about that. 
I do. I and quite funny actually when we spoke about this, uh, Sav and I had totally, totally the opposite reaction to that, and probably hers is the right one. Um, I spit my tea out when I read that because the implication essentially is that we couldn't possibly be doing this because we're not smart enough. That our information is too detailed, that our knowledge is too good, therefore this could not be a genuine campaign from genuine people that it is manufactured. Sav laughed and she probably is right to laugh and we probably should laugh at that, but at the same time, my God, it is so insulting. Isn't it just, isn't it just, let, let, me, let me go back to it, because what you've said is right. AstroTurf, it says here, is the name given to seemingly grassroots campaigns that have actually been established encouraged and sometimes funded by companies and corporate lobby groups interested in their success. One MEP assistant told CEO they have organised online, created electronic cigarette forums. Yeah, we've only done that in the last six months, haven't we? Good God. They're quite an aggressive lobby. Another said we get a lot of abuse on Twitter about calling for more legislation on electronic cigarettes. Now, I'm not, I'm just not going to give that any more airtime because frankly i don't think it's worth well it's not it's just not worth the paper that it would have been written on 20 years ago or in fact the electronic medium that it's floating over that's why i'm saying to you put your name and address so that when you write to your mep they can see that you are in their constituency let it be known that you are a constituent that's what you need to do now, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have an MEP who is on the Envy Committee, then let them know that you are so interested in your ongoing longevity that you've taken the time to research what's going on because you are so concerned that this could go horribly wrong and result in your early demise. Keep it very, very personal to you. And that is probably the best way of making your voice heard with an MEP. Now, exactly the same applies with your MP. If you watched last night's show, you'd have seen that we played in the Jack Straw piece that Swaff's come up with, and, and, and a beautiful piece of work it is. And Jack Straw, a Labour MP, was saying, write to your MP with your story. Because they then have got the evidence that their constituents and the fact of the matter is it doesn't matter whether you're a dustman whether you sell e-cigs whether you wipe people's backsides whether you're retired it doesn't matter what you are you are one of their constituents and you have a genuine concern and you need to write to your MP ASAP as soon as possible because remember this isn't just envy committee and parliament down here it's also the council of ministers and the council of ministers is made up by our MPs, by our health ministers, and the health ministers from all of the other um, European member states. So we need our parliament to be talking to that little lot and persuading them that, yeah, the MHR made a mistake and we've got rid of Jeremy Mean and we're not doing that anymore. We need to help them make that decision. Now, if there are any MEPs watching, if anybody from uh, the corporate Europe, European corporate observer, what the hell have you called? Uh, corporate European Observatory. If you are watching, understand this, right? I am not a corporation. I am not big tobacco. Neither is Lorien, neither is Sav. No, none of us here are in any way, shape or form associated with anything like that. Yes, we do TV programmes. The reason I do it is because I'm a git big fat lad with a git big fat gob. I'm not afraid to use it. And quite frankly, I like the sound of my own voice. And I like to think I'm helping people. That's the bottom line on it. There's nothing in it for me. Seriously, let me tell you straight from the heart now. If this goes completely the wrong way, there's a corner shop not 100 yards up from me that sells Marlborough. I'll be up there like a shot. You take my e-cigs away, I'll go straight back to Fags. I've got no vested interest. Vested interest. I've got no vested interest in e-cigs carrying on it makes no difference to me financially one way or the other in actual fact i think you'll agree with me sav it saved me money mm -hmm. it would save all of us a lot of money because mm -hmm. um, i've spent a lot to do this the fact of the matter is everybody that's tweeting 
that's emailing all of us. We're individual people that have a care for other folks. See, it's probably too late for me, but I'm thinking about my daughter and my grandson and my daughter's husband. At some point in time, they might want to give nicotine a try, and I'd much rather they use something like this than went out and sparked a fag up. I think that's only right. Uh, Lorraine, you got anything to add to that? No, I have. You're right. It, it is, and it's, it's funny when you say that about it. Isn't just about ourselves. Um, I mean, I smoked for 23 years. There's a good chance I've already done myself some serious damage. But I, I, I have a horrible image in the future that one of my kids is going to take up smoking, and I don't want to have to tell them that there was an option at one point, and we didn't fight hard enough to keep it for him. And um, watch one of my children smoke hopelessly like I did for 20 odd years but not have another genuine option I, that turns my stomach yes as indeed it does mine the whole, the whole idea that something that is as innocuous as I consider E6 to be uh, the whole idea that they're going to be taken away from us and we're going to be left with something that it, it's a toss of a coin 50-50 isn't it if you smoke cigarettes a toss of a coin now that's not to say that if you want to you can't if you don't want to, that's fine. If you want to, it's fine by me. As long as you know what the risks are, I don't have a problem with that. And one of the tactics that this piece, and believe me, this, this piece quotes Linda McCavern and God knows who else, they're trying to divide what they see as the nicotine-using community. They're trying to force a split between smokers and vapors. And they forget every vapor was once a smoker, with very, very, very few exceptions. I can count on... I can count on one finger, the only one I know that wasn't, and even that one doesn't use nicotine. Don't fall for it, don't be fazed by it. Sav, I can see your eyes are going again. <laughs> yes, I've got loads of stuff. Um, Marco Van Basten has said regarding the, I can't even read it, but the thing we've just read, <laughs> absolute foobar. Okay, that's polite. Yeah, and then he added, muddy in the waters before the vote, in his opinion. Yep. Winter Rogue says, so angry, and then followed by, oh, so we're now big tobacco lobbyists, apparently. Oh, yes. Well, we've been called <laughs> that before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Leanna Lawless says, I'm a consumer, not a tobacco lobbyist. <laughs> um, Doodlebug has said, we the at EC are absolutely furious about this, as I'm sure you can imagine. Blog to follow. Tom got angry enough to blog. Good on you, Tom. Yeah, Marco's also said we are life lobbyists and right to vape lobbyists, if anything. Mm -hmm. um, Doodlebug's also said you understand, right? They're basically saying that none of you are none of you ordinary vapors actually exist. Yeah. Kaz J has said you can smell their desperation. They will say anything because they're scared. Well, you've just got to look at what that the the guy from Who said in the Philippines. <laughs> Tabs, tabs have got a filter so they're safer than e yeah. for God's sake. Yeah, Amatron7 has said, disgraceful. We elect them, but they don't want us looking, in what, uh, looking into what they are up to. Mm -hmm. Lily has said, they simply totally underestimated the power of angry citizens and now they're shocked. <laughs> and uh, Jeff Bennion has said, if we're lobbyists, where do we fail our expense claims? <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! You've got you've got to like that one, haven't you? Yeah, expense yeah. expense claims would be very good. I wish. Yeah, no, not going to happen. Um, the bottom line on it is, we are what we are. We are real people. And uh, after after we get back from the second break, I've got a, a couple of words of advice for people that are tweeting. Uh, this has come from Clive Bates, and I did a little video to, to help out on this. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere, and then I'll run through again. Uh, what's happening on Wednesday so that nobody forgets. Back in two.
the, re the reason the reason I was laughing, I've got to show you this. Get up there. Look at that. There you go. She's gone. She's corpsed. <laughs> the reason the reason being, um, I, I I try to count us in. We've got Wirecast allows us to see when a video is going to end, so I try and count us in in different languages just to remind myself. So, it, but occasionally you forget. So it went fun, <laughs> fear, <laughs> dry, two, one. <laughs> She's followed about laughing. Da 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 da. -da. <laughs> I knew that would send her. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, ask Gary Dibley. He knows. Yeah, he knows. Glenn Dibley. Yes, Glenn Dibley. We always do. Right, where were we going? Oh, yes. Um, a little bit of video. If you, if you use Twitter, and if you don't, you should. I know I keep saying that, but seriously, you should. Um, it's a brilliant medium for, for information sharing and for pointing individuals at certain information. However, we made a discovery a little while ago, which... I knew nothing about and basically a lot of we've been retweeting what other people like a retweet you on Twitter there's a little menu comes down you click retweet but apparently and we didn't know this that doesn't send the tweet again from you to whoever was mentioned so let's say I was sending one to at sav it's at sav doesn't exist before you try it so if I'd, I'd sent a, a tweet at sav to sav so she would read it to something like, oh, I don't know, um, seriously, Sav, or at Sav, uh, vanilla custard is not a good thing to vape in a small room because it stinks. Now, if, if you just retweeted that, all of your followers would see that, but Sav wouldn't see it a second time. If she took the, uh, the notion to click on it and see how many times it had been retweeted, it would tell her, but it wouldn't tell her who by so she would have no knowledge. However, if you either commented to it or quoted it, she would see it a second time. And that's probably a little bit confusing. So here's a video I did earlier. Okay, tweeting, retweeting, commenting, quoting. This is how you need to do it. Let's say that there's a tweet that you wish to retweet. In this case, it's from Rupini. Rather than click on retweet, click on quote tweet. And you will see, up it comes. You can see what the character count is and just type this or plus one or whatever. So you quote the tweet. That way, any intended target, and in this one it would be CJ Snowden, will get the tweet. Let's see if we can find another one that is already targeted because obviously I can't do one for myself um, and here we go here's one from GVIP all right and you can see it's targeted at Nick Griffin that's the intended recipient so we click on the the retweet button and then quote tweet and that then says I agree and Nick Griffin MEP in this case will get your tweet again it will appear twice in the timeline once from the original one in this case GJ Vape and once from you if you retweet then only your followers see it Nick Griffin MEP in this case wouldn't get it a second time let's try this one as well with Jill Evans MEP quote tweet not retweet and there you go and I'm just going to type this this means please read it so there we go and that's how you do it you can also if you so desire copy and paste and let's try that one as well just copy it all and then paste a new message together and here it goes just paste that in and tweet it and that's it that's all you need to do that's it it's it is actually as easy as that on the PC application the Mac application on iPad and all the iOS applications you've got that option to quote a tweet it does mean 
if you are putting a tweet together that you think people will quote, you need to keep it short of the 140 characters. I reckon on around about 100 to 110 characters leaves room for them to be able to quote and then it just it'll get sent to that recipient as many times as people quote it and that's the way to do it that means that <coughs> if, if you are aiming something at Linda McCavan or Glenis Wilmot or whoever it might be then they'll see it any number of times from different people any number of times from different people so if a hundred people quote your tweet there'll be 101 tweets with exactly that wording hits in this case Linda McCavan's timeline she'll see that that's the way 101 people feel and that's what we want to happen the retweets she'll see it once and if she cares to look to see how many times it's been retweeted then it'll go from there so that's first thing that we want people to do is to is to get onto Twitter and start tweeting and quoting other people's tweets off to MEPs and MPs so that you're informing them please 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 be polite don't call them names don't be nasty just point them in the right direction and keep banging that home you know the amendment number we've had it confirmed have we we've had it confirmed yes. have we we have as far as we know we're still 58 we're still fi if anything changes we'll let you know It'll either be in the forum or Mark will tell you tomorrow night when, when his show is on. Then email them, as we said, with your name and your address and your telephone number so that they can correctly identify that you are a constituent. So email your own MAP. Okay? Um, that way, all of them have got enough of us that we can make a sizable chunk in their email inboxes but something else you can do that brings this to a wider audience than the audience that we have here on vapertrails.tv and on twitter and on the forums and Lorian has the details of all of that talking about stickers aren't we we are talking about stickers um now i know this the first one i'm going to tell you about isn't an echo thing okay this is something that we're supporting simply because it is a very very good idea and i know ec are behind it as well um the the black balloons that we've all seen with that e-cig saves lives logo on it um was the brainchild of a group of people on uk vapors um, and the idea was to get a message out there that was easily recognizable um, because we recognize the black box a white box with a black outline anyway from fag packets um, as car stickers. Now for the back of that the idea was then to put it onto those balloons. Now if we've got press in Brussels and they're going to see these black balloons with this logo on, on Friday the guy who's been collecting all of the donations um, that have been coming his way to make these stickers is getting the first delivery of them. Um, they're going to be going out to various vendors and to individuals and there's going to be a place where we as normal vapor can get hold of them. Um, these need to go everywhere and people need to see them. Now, without these balloons, there is a possibility that people might not have understood what this message was about. However, once this is covered, once we are seen in Brussels, our faces are there on TV, these balloons are there, the story will be told and that image will be shown. When people see that e Saves Lives sticker on anything that moves or doesn't move or can be stuck to, they are going to know what that means. And the idea is to get that image everywhere that people need to see that image and they need to know what it's about and it starts to kind of sink in without them even realizing what's happening and so this isn't an echo thing we've got our own sticker going on which is has more information on it and we'll talk about that when that's all ready and done the e six saves lives thing is done by the consumers um and this has been talked about and brainstormed by the users and this is our thing for all of us absolutely right it's Yet again, the European Union, the Mandarins over there and the pressure groups over there seem not to understand that we're not thick, we're not children, we're perfectly capable of researching things for ourselves. And here's an example of people who have come together in a forum which, frankly, was founded long before any of this took hold. UK Vapors has been around one form or another for the last, getting on for four years. All right, two different incarnations, but it's the same forum. It's the same people. It's the same name. It's the same idea that the whole ethos of the place 
has never changed. It is what it is. And the same applies to All About E-Cigs, Planet the Vapes, all of these other forums. None of them took, took rise because of the TPD. They took rise because people like to get together and swap notes. Robert West of NICE acknowledges that. He says, it, it, frequently in interviews he said, there are no groups of NRT patch users or those god-awful tampons that some people are still, still daft enough to suck on. There are no <laughs> groups of people get together going, uh, eh? have you tried this new patch? It's, uh, it's nice. Apparently it's lemon flavoured, you know. But it doesn't work. There's none of that. We are what we are. We're, we're, we're a gregarious bunch of people. You've just got to look at the various mini meets and what have you that go on to see that. And it's got nothing to do with the TPD and everything to do with the fact that, well, I like vapors. Do you like vapors, Lauren? I think I do, yes. Do you like vapors, Sav? I think they're brilliant. Have they been writing things to you in chat? They have, but as we're rapidly running out of time, Go on. Um, the main thing, um, Vape DJs ask, can you get details of exact meeting points at the station and all the important bits that he needs to know? Yeah, all the important bits are there. Um, I'll just play. The, I'm going to overrun slightly to do this, but here's the information coming up one more time. We meet as soon as possible after eight o'clock at the group check-in desk at St Pancras Eurostar Terminal. Apparently, it's the first check-in desk when you get into the place. You'll not be able to miss it. I'll be there. Sav will be there. Mark will be there. And possibly by the time other people get there, there'll be loads of us, and there'll probably be a Fuggestein. Once we've checked in, we get on the train. I'm going to let Mark or take it up just for a couple of minutes. This is where we are going to be, the little green area. That's uh, Place de Luxembourg. So if you're going to fly your helicopter in, that's where you need to be. And the, uh, the building with the little circular bit, that is the European Parliament. Now, we arrive at uh, Gar Midi, the station there. Uh, and if you take Route 2, which is the orange one, for about five stops, you come to Troon. From Troon, you can have a leisure little stroll down Place de Luxembourg. And that takes you to there. Hey, we'll update it again. That's it. I will remember how to drive this thing one of these days. That's all there is to it. Uh, we'll be back at the station at six o'clock, 1800 hours Brussels time, to get the train coming back and we should arrive back in St Pancras at 1957 or two years after I was born. How it's travelling in time I do not know. We'll be back just before eight o'clock. Anything else we need to cover Sav? No I think that's it. I think we've covered everything. Super duper. I'm going to play you out somewhat differently tonight uh, by placing up this cartoon which Rebecca Taylor has been posting all the way around the European Parliament building. Um, I shall unplug my microphone and leave you with a song that's been written by a vapor, performed by a vapor, for vapors, all about Wednesday. So until we see you next time from all of us here, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting everything that's going on. And I'll be back, hopefully, on Thursday to talk to you more then and let you know what's been going on. Uh, until then, enjoy this. Nicotine replacement therapy What's all that about? Do they want to kill us? It seems yes without a doubt We can smoke cigarettes or cigars They're fine for all of us They want to take our research And won't lift the ban on snuts But now we flexed our muscles To take them on in blossoms We're gonna burst to hundred black balloons We've all got our E6 and our favorite juice. We're gonna take a little trip today. We're going to some pancreas to catch a Eurostar, and pretty soon we'll all be on our way. 
We're going to Brussels, look at Brussels town The vapors will be arriving soon We are all united, we're coming on Invited to protest and to burst a black moon One, two, three, four Black balloons Black balloons Black Cigarettes are dangerous, everybody knows They kill at least 2,000 every day We vapors are determined to make our voices heard Please don't take our message away Our protest will be peaceful, we want the world to know That vaping will surely come to pass Politicians just don't get it, they want our E6 band They've got all their fat heads up there. One, Ooh. two, three, four. Black balloons. Black balloons. Black balloons. Black balloons. One, two, three, four. We're sick of being treated like lots of naughty kids. It's the kind of thing that every grown up hates. From where the sun don't shine We really don't need your nanny state 